Ever wanted to create an AI video where you have total control? I'm talking about deciding exactly who the character is, what outfit they're wearing, and the exact environment they're standing in. Well, I've got huge news. Today, we finally have a solution that lets you do exactly that. With incredible quality and the best part, it is completely free. Hello everyone, I'm Sotai, welcome back to the channel. If you caught the last video, you already know that Bindweave is an absolute game changer, a solution that completely changes the landscape by giving you total control over everything in your AI videos, from the characters right down to the setting. We built a basic workflow together in Comfy UI, and I know a lot of you have tried it out and the results have been absolutely insane, right? But today, we are not stopping at basic. Today, I'm going to take this workflow to a whole new level. This second video is going to tackle the toughest questions you guys have been dropping in the comments. How do you swap outfits while keeping the character consistent? How do you drop that character into literally any background you want? And the holy grail of AI video? How do you create videos with multiple characters at the same time without it glitching out? Oh, and of course, I'll also show you how to optimize your VRAM so your GPU doesn't catch fire while running this beast of a workflow. All right, enough talking. Smash that like button for me, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get straight into it. Before we dive deep into the details, I have to give you a heads up. This video is built directly on the foundation of video day one. If you have no idea what Bindweave is or how to set up the basic Bindweave workflow in Comfy UI, make sure to click the link I've put in the corner of the screen or down in the description to catch up right now. Don't try to skip ahead. Or you will get lost. All right, assuming we are all on the same page, let's get to work. Okay, on the screen right now is the basic bindweave workflow we built in the last video. I've got a workflow here that creates videos with any character I want. The quality is absolutely top tier, but there is one massive problem. It eats hardware for breakfast. The reality is, to run this original workflow smoothly, you need at least 18 GB of VRAM. And I know that number is a huge barrier for a lot of you guys here. Not everyone has an RTX 3090 or 4090 sitting in their rig. So before we dive into the advanced features, we have to solve this first puzzle. I'm going to show you how to optimize VRAM so you can run Bindweave even on mid-range cards. If you watched my tutorial on WAN Animate, this method is going to look pretty familiar. The good news is, right after I dropped the last video, the community stepped up. A legend out there uploaded GGUF versions for the Bindweave model. This right here is our lifesaver. You can see here we have all the versions ranging from Q8 down to Q2. Next to each version is the corresponding file size. The golden rule here is pick a version with a file size smaller than the actual VRAM you have available. Do not try to force the high Q versions if you have a weaker card, because your GPU will absolutely start smoking immediately. But pay close attention to this keyword, experimentation. Why? Because VRAM doesn't just hold the bindweave model, it also has to carry the text encoder, the VAE, and a dozen other things in the workflow. So even if the model file is smaller than your VRAM, it doesn't guarantee it'll run smooth right off the bat. My advice, start testing from the higher versions down to the lower ones. For example, with a 12 GB VRAM setup, I'd start testing with the Q3KM version. This is usually the sweet spot between performance and quality. The process is super simple. Download the model, throw it into your models slash UNet folder, restart Comfy UI and select the correct Bindweave Q3KM model in the one video model loader node. But we're not done yet. To be extra safe, we need to clean up the memory trash. Let's add the purge VRAM node to the workflow. I'm going to place it right here. And also right here, this helps free up redundant variables, reclaiming every precious megabyte for the rendering process. And the final weapon, if your PC is still screaming for help, reduce the load by lowering the resolution or dropping the frame count. But remember, this is the last resort. Prioritize using the GGOFs first to keep the video quality as high as possible. Alright, enough theory. Now let's hit run and watch the magic happen. 
And here is our result. Just look at that. The quality is still incredibly sharp. The input character is recreated with precision down to the last detail from the face to the body posture with absolutely no distortion or blurriness. And when we compare the results with the Flow 8 model, be honest, unless you are pixel peeping, can you even tell the difference? It is practically zero. The difference in quality is negligible. But the real difference is happening behind the scenes with this new workflow. I rendered this entire scene smoothly on a card with just 12 GB of VRAM. No crashes, no out of memory errors. We have officially smashed the hardware barrier for this workflow. All right, the hardware side is sorted. Now, let's get to the juicy part of this video, creative control. Let's say I want to recreate that super cool demo from the author. My character decked out in warrior armor, standing in front of an ancient stone wall, with cherry blossom petals falling all around, super cinematic. The simplest way everyone thinks of, just copy-paste that exact sample prompt right into here. Sounds logical, right? Let's hit run and cross our fingers. Oh, wait a minute. Look at this result. Total disappointment. The only thing the model got right is those falling cherry blossom petals. The rest? She is still wearing her old outfit. The background is exactly the same. There is no armor whatsoever. Why is this happening? The reason lies in the input image itself. This image contains too much information. It is basically screaming at the AI, hey, keep this outfit, keep this background. And so the AI prioritizes the original image over your text prompt. If you look closely at the author's demo, the input image they use is super minimal usually just the face. So what is the golden rule here? It is less is more. You have to be ruthless and eliminate every single piece of information that you do not want appearing in the final video. If you don't want that old t-shirt, don't leave it in the reference image. If you don't want that messy background, delete it. So to achieve this cherry blossom warrior concept, I'm going to switch up the tactic. I will only upload a close-up shot of the character, tightly cropped to remove all the surrounding areas, just like this. All right, everything is set. Click run, and let's hold our breath for the result. Boom! Look at that. Isn't that amazing? This is exactly what we needed. My character is now decked out in super cool warrior armor, standing amidst an ancient stone wall setting with cherry blossoms falling all around. It is almost a perfect match to the author's demo, but with my own character. But just to prove I didn't just get lucky with that last one, let's try a completely different example. This time, I'm going to copy this script. An elegant woman enjoying afternoon tea. I'm pasting the prompt right here keeping the exact same input image setup. All right, asterisk, click run ask, and let's see what happens. And here is the result we got. Yeah, still looking absolutely fantastic, right? So there you have it. You've got the secret sauce now. Just stick to that remove excess info rule for your input images and you can completely control the outfit and background exactly how you want with the bindweave workflow. Way easier than you thought, right? Okay, moving on. Now we're getting to the really fun part. How do we put multiple characters into the same frame? For example, let's say I want to add another character to the video. Just like that demo of two people interacting you see right here. It sounds complicated, but trust me, the method is surprisingly simple. So here is the mindset. You need to combine the information from both characters before feeding it into the workflow. Specifically, first I'm going to upload the two characters and create separate masks for each of them. Next, we need to bundle the data from these two characters to feed it into the main model. I'm going to use the image batch multi-node to stitch the reference images of both people together. Similarly, I'll use the mask batch multi-node to connect their masks. After that, just drag this output wire into the corresponding set node image and set node mask right here. Done. Basically, we are telling the AI, hey, this is person number one, this is person number two. 
process both of them at the same time, please. Okay, simple as that. Now I'm going to copy the prompt describing the scene with these two people, paste it in here, click run, and let's hold our breath for the result. Yes, how awesome is that? That is exactly what we wanted. We've got our two characters here happily taking a selfie side by side. Take a really close look at this. Both of them look incredibly natural. And the most important thing, there are absolutely zero artifacts popping up in this video. And here is the real money shot of the bindweave solution. You see absolutely no character bleeding between the two characters. Character A is A. Character B is B. There is no mixing of features whatsoever. This is a massive headache that so many other AI video solutions out there are still struggling to solve right now. But hey, one example isn't enough to convince us, right? Let's challenge it a bit more. I'm going to copy a completely different prompt script, paste it right in here, and let's generate another video. Let's see how Bindweave handles this one. Yes, this time it looks even better than the last one. The two characters appeared absolutely spot on with the concept I fed it. And like I said, Bindweave's identity retention is truly top tier. It clearly distinguishes who is who with zero confusion. So the secret is super simple. Just by adding those batch nodes, you can expand this workflow to create videos with as many characters as you want, all while maintaining extreme precision. In my personal opinion, this is the killer feature that makes Bindweave completely blow away other open source solutions currently on the market. It's not just about generating video, it's about controlling video. So what are you waiting for? I've already packaged this workflow up for you. Download it right now, throw it into ComfyUI, and start experimenting with your craziest scripts. So there you have it. I've just walked you through exactly how to upgrade your Bindweave workflow so you can take full control over any attribute, whether it's the outfit or the background, for one or even multiple characters in your videos generated by one video. If you found this content helpful, please smash that like button and share this video so more people can discover the channel. Thank you so much for now. Goodbye, and I'll catch you in the next one.